Okay, the Nigerian government is a, uh, uh, well, welcome back, first of all. The Nigerian government is um, prioritizing support for MSMEs as part of President Tinubu's economic reform agenda, recognizing them as, a critical, as critical to the economy by employing over 80% of the labor force and contributing nearly half of the GDP. The government has introduced a 20 billion naira intervention fund starting with 50 billion naira in grants for nano businesses followed by 75 billion naira targeting msmes to boost job creation economic diversification and export growth these support programs are accessible without needing connections as the Tinubu administration emphasizes fair, fair opportunities with transparent selection processes for applicants across the country. Information Minister Mohamed Idris highlighted efforts to raise awareness about these initiatives through town hall meetings nationwide and directed uh, public information agencies to ensure effective communication on available support. Our guest this morning is Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Wisdom. Unfortunately, I can't hear you right now. I don't know why. I was hearing you before now. Okay. Wisdom, welcome. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, thank good. you so much. Good to be here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when I was uh, talking earlier on, I, there was something I said while I was reading that story that said uh, you can access it without connections. And <laughs> it was so funny to me uh, that we now even recognize the fact that you need connections to be able to uh, get access to what government, uh, government has uh, said that people should get access to ordinarily. Uh, anyway, well, we're talking about the development of MSMEs. ML, MSMEs, <laughs> I always get that twisted. Okay, so uh, that the, the country or the federal government is developing that because 80% of that is contributing so much to the, to the economy and there's employment, all this and that, and so much money has been voted into that. How would you advise that this will work? Well, um, I mean, so much we see that the presidency is trying to do here, but uh, look, the, the economy is in a bad shape. So I, I even wonder any of those support what to amount to uh, for those entrepreneurs at the end of the day. You know, there, there, there are different drivers to the economy that I feel like it's not working. And, and because it's not working, I worry that even those loans or those support we're giving to the MSMEs, how it's going to work, how they are going to make good use of it. So that is where my problem is. One problem we've highlighted before is we have to say it out loud that you will get into that connection. Mm -hmm. It means that we, we, there's a problem there already that also some people used to get it before with connection. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're happy that they're working on that. But the second is if you give these entrepreneurs this support you're giving them, the economy itself, how is it helping them? The cost of living is high. Uh, 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 other drivers to the economy that should improve it, we do see it work. You know, so when we talk about this, is let us not um, uh, uh, speak like we don't know what the issues are, and let's not insult the intelligence of Nigerians to see that if it is working, we will know it's working. So, right now, even if you support those entrepreneurs with whatever amount of money you want to give to them. When they put it in their business and they begin to work, how exactly will that improve or what exactly will that do for them? There's power issue, there's fuel issue, cost of living is high. So how much of those monies you give to those entrepreneurs that is going to yield anything at the end of the day? So, so, so I'm really worried if we don't improve on these other drivers of the economy, how do we this support to these MSMEs even work? at the end of the day. I think yes, this is where my problems uh, lie, really. If you give an entrepreneur now uh, uh, any of those uh, loans, or, it, they are going to go to the market and struggle uh, because everything they need to get working, uh, I think, is on the high, high side at the moment. So where should we now channel this money to better so that we are seeing that we are improving the economy and everybody will benefit? Right now, there is a struggle in the economy uh, at the moment. Uh, things are not working so well.
Yeah, you asked the question correctly, and I think you should answer it. Where should we deploy this money? Because we've seen 500 billion, 75 billion, so much billions going, and it seems as if, okay, you, there will be a selection process, and then some people will benefit, and possibly there will even be no data of who has benefited and who has not benefited. So where do we, instead, if there is still time for that, if they have not... Uh, already had a list of people they have given this money to because sometimes when we hear the information they have already done it for instance when they talked about the yacht they had already paid for it uh, before we heard uh, in the public domain so um, where do we deploy this money just like you asked in your opinion yeah in, in my view the first very first place to start for example is power um, every business um, needs power to even grow every business needs uh, uh, power to survive. Every business needs it. Right now, companies, small business and the big ones are spending so much money on power. What can we do to, to reduce that pain when it comes to power? The grid collapsed yesterday for the eighth time. Mm. Nobody is going to be sacked. Nobody is going to be responsible. We are not seeing any action there. That's a problem. Where, what is the issue with the grid that we need to solve? Where can we put that money? Where do we need? So that is one area we need to start first of all. Yeah, but when, when you're talking about power, when you're talking about power, the Minister for Power has come out to say, and some experts also agree with him, that infrastructure is so old, and that's why it is leading to collapses every now and again. Then there's, vandal again, there's vandalism <laughs> that I, maybe I will blame them for because they should have done something proactive about that. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm not even sure the, uh, the 75 billion and the whether 500 billion, if you put it now, it will do a significant, it will have a significant change in the power sector as immediately as we might want it. So what are the alternatives when you're talking power? So the alternative we're talking power now is, okay, look, the grid we all agree is old. Where, what should we be doing now in the immediate, you know, to get power to Nigerians, to improve on the cost of power? All of those things, the Ministry of Power needs to sit down with the sector players and see where they can start on the immediate. Power is a big issue. In my community recently now, we just had a meeting to, to go and protest to uh, this group to say, look, this band 18 you gave us is not working. You understand? This band 8 is not working. Power is a pain point on every. Some organizations spend you know, nearly half of their money you know, on power, providing their own power or either not paying for their band A, and it's not they're not even getting at the end of the day. So power is a pain point of Nigerians. The next part we need to look at again is we are not a production country. It means agriculture is not working. You understand? Our food, everything, all of it we are still important to now. So we need to look at agriculture. Are we putting enough resources in agriculture? Because if we now produce a lot of what we eat, we spend less on importing, and that helps the economy. You know, the next thing again is security. After farming, we need to get the farm produce from the farm to the to the to the to the, to the rural areas to the market. Uh, is it secure enough? Some of those farms, especially in the, in the northern area and the, the, the north central, are they even safe to go and farm? Can we solve all those issues of security? We are still not there yet on security of those areas. So agriculture is not working. We need to look at agriculture, put money in agriculture, because if we don't produce what we need to eat ourselves, as enough as we should, we continue to import, that affects the economy. That's what we also need to look at. And these things will be felt on the immediate if we begin to you know, channel resources there. The next aspect is education. You understand? How, what, how are we doing on education? We still have a lot of children out of school, can we put money there? Can we reduce, how can we reduce the cost of, you know, someone going to school? All those uh, aspects and reforms that need to happen in education, we are not feeling the impact. That's why the problem is happening again. The next part of it again is um, 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 health. So much money is spent on health care since COVID-19. We have not invested again. We are not putting money there again. Nobody is paying attention to health care. We need to put on the Nigerians spend a lot of money on healthcare. The next is transportation. This presidential uh, uh, CNG initiative is fantastic, good idea, but we need to even drive it much more because because people are spending more money on fuel. The the CNG initiative 
you know, people are not even buying into it because, you know, a, a lot of people are still worried that they may still have issues. We need to increase visibility on those things. So transport, healthcare, education, agriculture, these are areas we need to begin to put money and push. When we do this and the economy gets to a certain level, then we can, if we give loans to MSMEs to go and push their businesses and to go all of that, they are going to feel the impact. The burden will be less on them. We are going to see it from, the, from how they spend the money, those impact on their businesses. They are going to see that they are spending less on power. They are saving more to put back into the business. They are spending less on transportation. They are going to put the money back into their business. What we have now is not what it is. And I can tell you for free, the ministry, Minister of Information and the National Orientation, when he goes to those town halls, he's planning to set up to go and talk to people. When they go there, the first thing they will tell him is they spend so much money on transport to get to come there for that town hall. Nigerians are not feeling money in their hands. You understand? The money is still not to be flowing. So the economy is just really slow. Some of these reforms, I think, on the short term, what are the short, you know, the short term things that needs to be done? The Nigerians are, 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 are not suffering as much as they are right now. And we need to be honest with this to, to Mr. President. Uh, I don't know if his advisors are telling him the honest truth, but I will tell you we're on the street. We feel the pain with Nigerians. Nigerians are suffering, really. The economy is biting hard, and the pain, pain is. But the hot part of all of this is that we don't see it on the part of government if they are feeling it also. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, well, um, I'm not sure, or at least Nigerians are not sure, that the advisors of the, the president or even the governor or public office holders say the truth all the time. Uh, maybe 20% of them will say the truth, and mostly these people don't last because those who massage the ego of the, the, the people in public and public offices are the ones that stay. It's, it's on us, the individuals or the, the citizens, to say what we need to say. And if we have a leader like our president that doesn't go on social media, at least that, that's what his handler said at some point, I, and he himself also said it, a leader that doesn't go on social media to see what the people are feeling, then it will be difficult to, to hear the pains or feel the pains of the people. But now the federal government is talking about reforms in so many things. Educational reform, we just had a headline today that uh, the education system will be reformed and some in new innovation, there's some innovations will come into it. Uh, they were talking about this when they were uh, talking about uh, giving scholarships to the arrested minors that were starved for over three months in prison. We also have been told that uh, they're doing something about the transportation uh, that's why they are hopping on the need to go to CNG and I don't know how that is working or how that will work. They, they are encouraging people to go CNG because it is cheaper and if it is cheaper it also will translate in a cheaper transportation for everybody and all that. I don't know whether you think that is not enough. And they said they are going to also um, help the agricultural sector by making sure some farm, the farmers get grants and all that. Don't you think they are working enough? In fact, right now, they have said they are reviewing uh, some the pros and cons of the advice that comes from IMF all the time, and they're seeing how it helps the citizens and all that. So do you think the policies of government so far are not working, and how can they make it better? I think everything seems too slow. That's where, that's what. Everything seems too slow. I but but is it slow towards the right direction or towards the wrong direction? Because whether you move fast or slow, if you are towards the right direction, is a good thing. But if you move fast, for instance, to the, towards the wrong direction, then it's negative. Look, whether towards the right, whether towards whether towards the positive or negative, whatever it is, right now, we are not seeing anything even working. Uh, it is too slow. Uh, that, that's the point. And like I said before, the advisors and handlers of Mr. President need to be very honest with him and give him very honest feedback. You know, and I want to see the president at the forefront of all of this. We don't see the president taking charge. Like you said, it's not even on social media. So how would he know? 
we don't see it out there and get you know going to the streets engaging people we don't see the, that visibility we want from the president well even like that he can be everywhere at the same time but he needs his advisor to be honest with him everything you see i, I was at the, at the event uh, energy events recently and i asked everybody how many of us have switched our cars to cng i don't know about 100 people only five six people said they you know uh, they've been able to switch their cars to cng what it means is that you know there's still much work to be done uh, with this issue of cng and, and good enough uh, representative from the presidential initiative of the cng i mean we're in that event so uh, i have to tell them look you can see there's more work for you to be to be done here so it, it, there's so much they seem to be doing the presidency but you agree with me everything is just too slow this is one year and how many months of this government so far uh, we need to see you know speedy changes so we would like that the president has shuffled his cabinet to remove people that he felt were underperforming in their ministries and then bring in new people we want to see th those workings go on the new minister for trade investment and industry uh, Jumoke, oh, 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 mrs Jumoke, she, i mean hearing her talking to the press i can see she will be on top of this because investment we also need to pursue it you know foreign direct investment are coming to the country new businesses we, we agree but investors will not come into a country where they don't they're not optimistic enough to see that they're going to get returns you know all that like i said other drivers in the economy that needs to see this working we everything is just too slow in my opinion so we need to move a bit faster we need to move even if it's the right direction we need to move with more clarity on what the government is doing that's that's where my pain point is you know that's where i'm saying that maybe they are not honest with mr president on what is being done and the way i see the man once he sees that there's an issue somewhere he's, he's able to move swiftly to correct it you understand but he needs that to be told or to to to, to be given that feedback that these things are not working can we move a bit faster we have the revenue the new tax reforms act in the national assembly again those reviews, those public hearings that needs to go into everything, they need to hasten it. I mean, they passed the national, uh, the new national term in one week, so we know that the, the national assembly can work in in in, 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 a, in a level of speed if they want to. So things should not be slow. Taxes, where well, the people are taxed in too many you know places. This reform on tax is good. The committee has worked so much on it. Can we speed up that whole process to ensure that we have this in place? So that we know that we have one bucket to even, you know, get our revenues from. We know that this is what the tax, you know, will be looking like right now. So everybody knows. So all of these are drivers to even bring in new business. Okay. So in my view, everything needs to really be hastened up. Nigerians are suffering. They need immediate, you know, cushion at the moment. You, you, you should go out. I, I'm, I'm disturbed. So I'm talking from a pain point, you know, that look. I'm really disturbed on what's happened in the street. You know, jobs. Where are the jobs? As we speak, where are the jobs? Really, where are they? <laughs> so I, I I don't know, but these are just my own view to say, look, a lot of this needs to really be be accelerated as much as we can. And we need the president to be at the forefront. This was a time where we have the president speak to us one in once in the blue moon. The president needs to be giving us constant audits and progress reports. We need to see him at the forefront of you know, leading the charge on some of these economic reforms. We need to see him, you know, reassuring Nigerians. I doubt well, that there, we have not, all not lost hope at the moment. He will, he will not do that, or he may not do that. At least he showed us the sign during campaigning, even at that critical time where everybody speaks so that people will be convinced he told his proxies to do the talking for him so you can't expect anything more but we just hope that those proxies the way they spoke for him will also work for him so that his agenda will be realized uh, i would have asked you to talk to the people as well but uh, uh we've run out of time and we s we're seeing where where the problem is we do hope that those who need to know uh will know and listen and do the needful by telling the president and advising accordingly we'd like to thank you wisdom for coming on the show thank this you. morning thank you
We've been talking with Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst, and we we're looking at the fact that the federal government has promised that they are going to boost their uh, MSMEs and uh, make sure that employment is also boosted and uh, the economy also grows because of the growth of these uh, small-scale businesses. We do hope that the right thing will be done at the right time. We shouldn't wait until the people lose their lives because of suffering before you implement a policy that you need to implement. Like Wisdom said, it is too slow. Whatever needs to be done, needs to be done now and fast. Uh, that's uh, how we wrap it up on the show this morning. We'd like to thank you for being there for us. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's meet again tomorrow.